Martin, thank you. OK, so let's take a look in a bit more detail what we know about Masood. Originally, Adrian Russell Ajao. He was born in Dartford in Kent on Christmas Day in 1964. He was 52 years old, was married twice and had three children. Now, he grew up in East Sussex, went to school in Tundra, Tunbridge Wells. This photo that you can see here was taken when he was a teenager. He was already known to police and had a string of previous convictions. That started with criminal damage when he was just 18 years old. In 2000, he was jailed for two years after a violent attack on a man in East Sussex. At this time, he was using the name Adrian Elms. Three years after that, he was jailed again, this time for six months for grievous bodily harm and possession of a knife. That was after an incident in Eastbourne. It's thought he may have been radicalised in prison around this time, by the way. And it's believed he then left the UK in 2005 and started to work as an English teacher in Saudi Arabia before returning to... It happens every time. They're all radicalised by Islam. Every single one of them is radicalised by Islam. And every single one of them, if they aren't from the Middle East, travelled to the Middle East either Pakistan, at, you know, somewhere in the Middle East at one point in their lives before they committed the act of terror. So there are patterns here that we can... Saudi Arabia is a cancer on the world. Saudi Arabia is a hereditary dictatorship. There are no political parties. There are no elections. The same vile, corrupt monarchy has been in control for hundreds of years. So why does Obama bow to Saudi royals like he's their house bitch? every time he visits. He could lick Kim Jong-un's feet while proclaiming his eternal devotion to the dear leader, and it would be less shameful. Saudi Arabia is the worst country in the world, bar none. If it disappeared off the map tomorrow, the planet would hold the biggest party you've ever seen. This is a country that was directly involved in 9-11. You believe that support came from Saudi Arabia? Substantially. And when we say the Saudis, you mean the government, rich people in the country, charities? All of the above. This is a country that threatens economic blackmail if its role in 9-11 is revealed. This is a country that can safely rely on the Obama administration to cover up its role in 9-11. There is suspicion in the U.S. that parts of the Saudi government were involved in the September 11th attacks. Now, the president opposes legislation that would allow lawsuits against countries that aid terrorism. Some 9-11 family members are outraged the president is going along with Saudi Arabia, which is warning that it will sell off hundreds of billions of dollars worth of American assets if this bill passes. This is a country that constitutes the most significant source of funding for Sunni terrorist groups worldwide. This is a country that bankrolled the rise of ISIS. This is a country that bankrolled Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. This is a country that received $640 million worth of humanity shredding cluster bombs courtesy of the US while Washington lectured the world on Bashar al-Assad using cluster bombs. This is a country whose leaders espouse the most fundamentalist form of Islam, yet who then all travel to Europe to engage in the most debauched hedonism imaginable. There are new embarrassing cables from WikiLeaks. The website released more U.S. State Department documents today. One of the cables accuses members of the Saudi Arabian royal family of throwing wild parties that in every way break their own country's laws, including bans on booze and hookers. The cable reads, and I quote, alcohol, though strictly prohibited by Saudi law and custom, was plentiful at the party's well-stocked bar. It was also learned through word of mouth that a number of guests were in fact working girls, not uncommon for such parties. When it comes to cutting loose abroad, some of the Saudi establishment don't exactly present a picture of religious piety. Saudi princes have been seen raining hundreds of thousands of dollars on women in nightclubs, ready cash by their sides. While ordering the execution of gay people, these same rulers then travel to London to take part in gay orgies. They're total fucking hypocrites. This is a country that treats female drivers as terrorists. Manal al-Sharif was arrested by Saudi Arabia's religious police for driving in 2011. Many powerful Islamic clerics are against it. One of them recently appeared on TV and claimed that driving would harm women's ovaries. This is a country that, according to Human Rights Watch, 
carries out systematic discrimination against women and religious minorities. This is a country that enforces Sharia law, the most draconian, barbarous legal system that man has ever devised. According to Sharia law found in the Quran, there are three major criminal categories for which capital punishment can be imposed. The first is based on specific crimes and punishments found in the Quran called Hudud and considered crimes against God. This includes adultery, converting to another religion, and homosexual behavior. Murder is not included in this category and is instead seen as a personal dispute. This is a country that lectures Europe about not taking in enough Syrian refugees, while itself taking in precisely zero Syrian refugees, even though they have 100,000 air-conditioned tents sitting empty for most of the year that could house three million migrants. Instead of importing refugees who share a similar culture, the Saudis are exporting extremist Wahhabism by offering to build 200 mosques in Germany, as well as hundreds more throughout Europe and the US. This is a country that just carried out its highest number of beheadings in two decades. This is a country that treats anyone who calls for its reform as a terrorist and kills them while arming and funding actual terrorists. This is a country whose security forces open fire on and massacre anti-war protesters. This is a country that helps its ally, Bahrain, another despotic hellhole, by sending in its military to brutally crush protests. Nothing good ever came out of Saudi Arabia. What did Saudi Arabia ever give to the world? The most intolerant, hateful belief system ever. The San Bernardino killers, 15 of the 19 hijackers, and Osama Bin Laden. Well, gee, thanks, but no thanks. Why is the West making enemies of countries like Russia that could provide plentiful oil? While cozying up to a country that oversaw the deadliest terror attack on US soil in history, simply because we're dependent on its oil. Why did the West bomb and destabilize Iraq, Libya, and Syria, three nations controlled by secular leaders, while handing out lucrative weapons deals to theocratic extremists? Why is the West even dignifying the existence of this horrible shithole, never mind bowing and groveling to its totalitarian leadership? Saudi Arabia is a cancer on the world. And only when the House of Saud is overthrown will this putrid, festering, carcinogenous boil on the face of the planet be lanced for good.